Welcome back to another instalment of New Zealand Bird of the Week, where in this video I will be talking about the Black Shag, large water birds that like many of their kind face persecution by fishers due to their supposed competition over trout, something that has made them more wary of people in turn. I hope you enjoy. Black shags, otherwise known as great cormorants, are large black shags that have black and brown wings as well as white feathering over their cheeks and throats. They are most similar to the little black shag, although they are smaller, more slender and with a thinner bill, and without the yellow facial skin found in black shags. Also, spotting them from afar can be harder due to their lack of a white belly like their relatives, so identification can often be much trickier with them. They are in fact New Zealand's biggest shag species, coming in at sizes of over 2kg and lengths of 88cm. They are almost cosmopolitan in distribution, being present not only in Australasia, but Eurasia, Iceland, Africa, the northeast coast of North America and Greenland. They are indeed widespread throughout New Zealand, although sparsely so, being found from Northland to Stewart Island, as well as on many offshore and outlying islands presence in a variety of habitats including coastal waters, estuaries, harbours, rivers and lakes, including up to the subalpine zone. They consume small and medium sized fish of a variety of species pelagic and benthic, generally feeding alone but occasionally forming flocks where prey is abundant. They have poor visual acuity and so therefore locate prey by touch using their bill and then relying on the rapid extension of their long necks to capture food without the need for an energetically expensive pursuit. After a bout of fishing, shags must then spend a lot of time afterwards perched with their wings spread out, preening and drying their feathers as they are not waterproof, thus meaning that they get waterlogged and cold quicker than other diving seabirds, explaining their said behaviour. Timing of nesting depends on whether the colony is at a coastal or inland size, as well as whether it is a pair's first nest of the season or a replacement for an earlier failed attempt. Therefore, while most pairs lay clutches in autumn and winter, it is possible to observe them in any month of the year doing so. Adults early in the breeding cycle also have the skin below their eyes turn a reddish orange, as well as a small black crest appearing on the nape and upper neck to signal readiness, with them mostly nesting in trees, but also on rock ledges and artificial structures like docks and piers. Nests, often repeatedly used over several years, are mostly made up of sticks and foliage, with clutch sizes being typically 2-5 to five eggs, with both parents incubating and caring for their young once hatched. They also tend to remain year-round within a few kilometres of where they nest, which has made them more susceptible to people as we'll get into. Black shags were once persecuted en masse for decades by fishers who believed that they ate large numbers of trout and other game fish and were thereby competing with them or even robbing them. Bounties were therefore issued by New Zealand's acclimatisation societies between 1890 and 1940, with unregulated shooting still going on until their partial protection in 1986. Not only this, but nests and even whole colonies were also exterminated, with a publication made in 1945 named The Shag Menace by H.G. Williams demanding a wholesale destruction of them in order to make the Dominion's waters worthy of the claim to be the angler's paradise. As mentioned, it was only until 1986 that this wholesale destruction ceased, after they were partially protected due to research showing that they had little impact on trout populations, and that they preferred eels and perch, animals that are both slower moving and put up less of a fight for the shags. While they are largely protected, and few if any are shot nowadays, it can still occur occasionally as landowners can legally kill them if they damage commercial property, as has been the case on fish farms, although most leave them be. Their population is estimated as around 5,000 through 10,000, making them the most common shags in New Zealand, being able to live for up to 20 years. They are still wary of people despite being readily seen at harbours, likely as the result of the persecution they once faced by fishers and hunters. In some parts of the world, particularly in China and Japan, they have been trained to capture fish for humans, with a ring around their necks being placed to prevent them from swallowing their catch, then deploying them from small boats. Once they come back up with a catch, the fishers are then able to force open the cormorant's mouth by apparently engaging the regurgitation reflex, with some older birds still fishing and participating in the practice, even without the rings and tethers. The eggs and nestlings of tree-nesting black shags seem to be rarely preyed upon by introduced mammals, from our limited information and surveying, with the pairs and colonies nesting on the ground rather than in the trees perhaps being more at risk. 
And with that, I thank you for watching this instalment of New Zealand's Bird of the Week. For next time, you are now able to vote for the flesh-footed Shearwater, medium-sized dark seabirds that have light pink feet that give them their name. And with that, I'll see you next time, whenever that may be.